But yeah, there's a really good community of runners in Tutu, and these, these kind of events are really good to be able to get on together. And obviously, Pete's app, which is really, really amazing. Um, building out a community is, is um, not easy, and um, I think it's, yeah, it's a really good thing. So today, I'm going to do my best to help. I'm not, I can't give out any medical advice because being a physio, you have to kind of follow certain rules, but I'll do my best to, to help. Um, I run a physio practice in Tooting and we do specialize in running injuries, um, which is complex. The, the, the nature of running injuries is, is complex. Um, and sometimes what makes it more complex is when you've got a resource like the internet, which is a really good way of spreading potentially bad information, basically. But at the end of today, um, I'll be yeah able to help you and shine some light on uh, some things and some places to spend your energy and not spend your energy when you've got something like an injury. Um, and also I'm going to be doing that through a patient story. So you'll get to hear a bit about how we help people as well um, and get, get an idea of, um, you know, the process of physio really as, as well, because that's another thing that people get, get wrong as well. And any questions, you know, we'll have some time at the end, but equally, uh, if you do have any questions through the talk, then just uh, let me know. So I'm going to introduce a, a patient of mine called Mandy, who we saw last year, um, and she um, came in with a, a, a bit of a knee injury, and which is very common in in, in runners, um, as you may may have realised uh, yourself, and also um, a bit of a pain on the inside of her shin as well. Um, and what was um, going on was that for the last twenty months before she came in, she'd basically not really been able to push more than five k. And if she did, she would end up in a fair bit of pain. Um, and she couldn't really get to a point where she was trying to get to that marathon level, basically. Um, so she came in and the biggest cause um, of... Actually, no, I'm going to talk about that later, actually. So, yeah, first thing she said was, that I think that I've got the wrong shoes for my um, foot type. And I think that's the main reason why I've got this, 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 this shin problem and this knee problem. And that was the first myth that we wanted to, to talk to her about. Um, footwear comes down fairly low on the reasons why injuries happen. Um, that doesn't mean to say that we need to completely disregard footwear, but it's important to ask the question, who says that footwear is important? And more often, it's the footwear companies. I'm not trying to create some sort of conspiracy, you know, theory, but um, the people who push that type of information are the footwear companies. So you go into the shop and you get a foot scan, and you get told to wear and buy a certain type of shoe, which is more expensive. Um, but in reality, the research, which is what we look at in physio, to, you know, shows that footwear isn't as important as some of the things that I'll talk about later in the talk. So the first thing that people think about is footwear. I need to buy some new trainers. She bought two pairs of new trainers. Both of them had been, you know, hadn't helped her injury. Um, there are extremes, you know, for example, someone who goes from a really supportive footwear down to barefoot running, that's a time when footwear would be important and would be a factor of the reason why someone may well get injured because we're taking away all the support through someone's heel. Therefore, they're going to become a mid, a mid foot and four foot runner, and therefore their calf's going to work on overtime, which could lead to things like Achilles tendinopathies and things like that. Um, the other example would be yeah, when someone is particularly hypermobile through their foot and they're really, really flexible. There's certain shoes that they potentially should invest in because um, they need more support, uh, or if someone's uh, got a very particular type of uh, foot type, then there are extremes and, and that's where footwear can be important. But for the general population, footwear is massively overvalued as, as far as you know, its relation to uh, running injuries. Um, and I wouldn't be buying a, a really pair of, expensive pair of running shoes without being 100% sure that those foot, you know, the, the, the shoe that you're wearing is the biggest factor in why you're injured. Um, having said that, treating an injury like, for example, shin splints, um, and, and buying a particular type of shoe may well make it feel better. Um, but again, if we're talking about the reason why the foot injury or the, the injury happens, 
then footwear comes down fairly low on, on the reasons why running injuries happen. Um, so moving on through the story, we, we got her in for an assessment. We, that was the first thing she said. She thought it was a footwear. Um, and the other thing that we had to educate her on as well, which is myth number two, which is that running wears out my knee. She was worried that she'd done too much running in her life and that she'd worn, out of her, knee, she'd worn her knees out, basically. Um, and the good news is, I'm assuming that attending a running webinar means that everyone's a runner here. Um, there's actually very little research to show that running is uh, something that wears out your knees. And, it, and even the question mark is, uh, what, what does wearing out your knees mean, really? Um, there's a lot of research to show that running actually helps with strengthening cartilage. Uh, it keeps your body weight low, which is proven to help and um, reduce the effects, or uh, you know, reduce the chance of getting things like arthritis. Um, there's also a lot of research to show that it strengthens a lot of the knee muscles, so your quadriceps, the hamstrings, the calf, um, which even when someone does have something like degenerative changes in their knee, they're going to feel them a lot less because their knee has a lot more load tolerance uh, because they're stronger, basically. Um, people think that joints are like parts in a car and they're bits of metal that wear out and eventually they wear out so much that we need to replace them which isn't the case, um, they're biological living, it's, it's a lot more complex than um, it just being a, a kind of material that wears out basically. Um, and all of the things I've just described are all things that would help promote health in the joint of, of, uh, of, of, a, of a knee, for example, um, compared to someone who's very inactive or someone who um, overtrains or, or someone who doesn't exercise at all basically. Um, so um, the times when it does potentially cause injuries, you know, to, to someone's knee is when they're potentially doing too much too quickly. Um, and they're doing more than their knees, knees can tolerate basically. Um, so that was the second thing we, we took, spoke to her about. Um, we, we sort of explained that she was quite young to be, you know, worried about things like wear and tear. Um, and that, that helped with her confidence. Um, and we decided to move through a treatment plan with her. We found out it was a patellofemoral joint issue, and which is very standard. You, do, you, might, you might see it as runner's knee on the internet. Um, and she also had a bone stress injury, which was a bit more, um, a bit, a bit more unique in the fact that we had to take her out of running because we needed to promote bone healing, which is unusual. Most of our patients, we do try and keep them running, but with, with a bone injury, we have to respect the healing process and she had to kind of cross train for a period of time. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the other thing we had to do a lot of uh, work with her on was with education around uh, training schedules, uh, which is where Pete's app comes in so well, because his training schedules are amazing. Um, but basically in the world of running, there's very little, uh, and there's very few people and very few things that are stopping people from doing uh, the hardest run they possibly can every time every time they go out for a run so people overvalue intensity and um it's kind of go hard or go home um because uh, you know there's, there's potentially some false beliefs about the harder you push yourself the better effect it's going to have on your body and the better it's going to affect it's going to have on your time um, you know, rest is rust, gets banded around. Um, and no one is saying, um, let's prioritize rest. No, no one's saying, how do you boss your recovery? Um, and this was a mistake that, that potentially she, she had made, this, this lady Mandy. Um, every time she went out, she was running, you know, a hard run. She was pushing as hard as she possibly can, uh, could. Um, and... This, this was a big factor in her, the reason why her footwear didn't make a difference when she got new footwear. And that was the big, big cause of her running injuries, basically. Um, and the reason, you know, the reason why it's important to understand these kind of things is because um, when you run with fresh legs after you've had an easy, easy-ish week and, you know, the last run of your week, you're going to push it really hard, you've got fresh legs. So you can even push yourself 10 or 20% harder than if you've, gone all out for five workouts in a week. Um, so potentially your actually performance is going to be better 
But there's also a lot of research to show that people, again, who do those eight to 10 out of 10 um, on the effort scale workouts three to four times a week have a much, much higher risk of injury, um, which is pretty much what happened in lockdown. There was a bit of a pandemic for knees. I was following Google searches for knee pain and yeah, there was a lot of people uh, overdoing you know, overdoing it because you know it was, it was such a unique situation. But um, and the other thing we, we spoke to her about was sleep as well. So um, that's a, that's another kind of something we had to unravel with her. You know, the biggest predictor of bone stress injuries in women is lack of sleep, um, which isn't something you would read on a a night shoe website. Um, and um, that was something which she found really interesting. Now, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what happened in the end, but she, she, now, she now balances out her running a lot more. She has some easy runs, tempo runs, some, some kind of um, some, some gentle cross training and things like that. Um, and those harder runs, she's, she's able to push herself a lot, lot harder, basically, um, and not worry about overdoing it, basically, as well. Um, the other thing that she was asking us about, you know, when, while we were treating her was things like massage and there's certain injuries which massage, massage help with, but I'd say that would be maybe myth, myth number four. Um, things like theraguns, you know, deep tissue massage do have their place and they help with recovery and uh, they actually feel quite nice. They're quite therapeutic, quite a good way to unwind after a bit of you know, a heavy session. Um, but there's certain injuries which massage isn't going to help with. So one would be a tendon injury. Um, and that's where a tendon is really not going to like being pushed and pressed. So a lot of Achilles tendon patients, which is the tendon at the back of your heel, cut away their trainer because they don't like any contact on the tendon. So uh, sometimes there's a bit of a misbelief that, that massage is going to fix everything as well. Um, and 50% of running injuries are tendon injuries. Um, so um, getting your Theragun or getting your massage gun or getting a foam roller or getting your friend to put their elbow into the bit that hurts can sometimes lead to, to problems as well. Um, so even though you, your housemate might might quite take quite 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 nice pleasure in it. Um, cool. So so yeah, she we got to, got got her cross training really really hard. She was. We found the cardiovascular targets that she wanted to hit. And she actually didn't run for her, the three months leading up to her marathon. And she um, kept asking us about stretches as well. Um, and that was something which, you know, I never want to kind of stop people from, do, from doing things, but, but stretching again is potentially a bit overvalued as well. There's, um, it's again, very therapeutic to do after a run. And I, I would say, you know, there's no harm in doing it. Um, but there's a lot of people that come in and say, I haven't been stretching, which is that's, that's why I'm injured. Um, but in actual fact, stretching, you know, once you've done your run, stretching isn't going to undo the amount of load that you've asked your body to do. And it's not a kind of cure all. And there's a, not a great deal of research to show that it has any long lasting effect. So other than it feeling good, um, there isn't a huge amount of research to kind of actually back up the benefits of stretching. Um, so uh, that would be the last myth that we kind of went through with her and explained that you, know, you can definitely do it. There are some risks of doing it straight before a run because it potentially lengthens the muscle, which in theory almost reduces its tensile strength. So if you're going to be doing a fast run and you've made the muscle really stretchy, then that's where you can potentially uh, get into trouble a little bit as well. So. Uh, but after after training, stretching is fine, but it's not going to be something that fixes uh, someone's injury, basically, uh, even though it does feel good. Um, so, yeah, to tail off and finish the story, um, she finished, she, she did her marathon, she beat her time by 15 minutes, and that was without running at all, um, because we knew that she had the chronic load, which is she'd run a few marathons before, She'd hammered the cross training and was fit as a fiddle because of the work she did on the elliptical, spin bike, rowing, swimming. Um, and even though it's quite unorthodox that we had to take her out of running, do cross training because of the bone stress injury. Um, she was really happy, got up the finish line and um, 
She now has a schedule that reflects her abilities. She now values, uh, values rest as well as intensity and has a good, good diverse kind of training schedule. She has a good pair of shoes, but she, she's kind of not desperate to, to go out and buy a load of new pairs because she knows that's as long as she's got a good training schedule, um, she shouldn't have to worry about that as much. Um, when something hurts, she might stretch it, she might massage it, but um, she tends to get a little bit of guidance on what she should be doing um, from us. Um, and she's kind of back on track and back to running now as well. Um, so I wanted to kind of make it quite quick and concise and get through the main points without uh, the death by PowerPoint. Um, to, uh, to answer any questions, there's a couple of people who asked uh, questions who couldn't be on the call. So um, I'm going to get my dive, dive in with those. And if anyone's got any, get any, uh, got any right now, you can write them in the chat or um, come on live. Um, uh, that was the question. Yeah, that was the question actually that someone had asked. Um, yeah, does anyone have any, any that jump to mind, spring to mind? Anything to add there, Pete? Yeah, I'm happy to. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Dan. Hi, Dan. Uh, yeah, so, so I've had not knee pain, but I, you know, I get, I get a lot of injuries. And I guess the, the question is, if, it's some, if you're somebody who gets loads and loads of injuries, do you think that every injury is solvable? Or do you think there are some, some situations where people have just got a chronic, a chronic issue that's never going never gonna to go back? That's a good question. Um, as physios, we're always very optimistic. Um, but to be honest, I, I would say that the most injuries with the right amount of time, uh, uh, with the right amount of determination, should be the injuries that can be sorted out. And um, there's often a really strong kind of root cause behind them. Um, but if um, those factors aren't uh, in play, you know, the, it would take a, a fair bit of determination from, from a patient to be able to kind of work hard in their rehab and things like that. Um, if that was there, then there's no reason why someone shouldn't be able to. There was a lady who had back surgery. The doctor said, don't run again. She went to marathons with us. Um, and she, you know, she, she kind of had a really fairly, fairly serious back kind of problem as well. Um, so with the right amount of determination, um, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's another lady who I, I've never, you know, not one of our patients, but she, um, I think she had to have her kneecaps removed and she, she does marathons and things like that. And um, with the right amount, you know, with the right advice, you know, rehabilitation, gradient is return to running. Um, you know, the majority, vast majority of injuries are, are ones that can be, can be sorted, yeah. Um, so yeah, my dad actually, my dad was a, was a runner and then he got told in his 30s, um, you've got this chronic back issue, you're never going to get, you. this is obviously 35 years ago or so, you're mm. never going to run again. Um, <clears throat> and then he stopped, stopped running for like 20 years and then did an Ironman. Um, when he was like in his in his uh, 60s so yeah like you get yeah it obviously can happen but yeah but um it is very yeah so you give me you've given me hope on that and you've also told me that stretching isn't that important which is another another great piece of advice i hate stretching so that's good uh, <laughs> yeah it's um once you get the fire in the belly you know there's there's you know you kind of gives you a real kind of real advantage but someone who's not that fussed about running and comes in and says, oh, I wouldn't mind getting back into running then they're not going to have that same level of dissemination basically um, but uh, but that doesn't mean yeah it would be a quick thing it, it, you know it would be something which would take a bit of time but um, but yeah often often you know if it's more like niggles different areas always you know just niggling then they may be more straightforward to fix and um, Again, there's normally like a, a root cause which um, is driving all of those symptoms. And what we do in the clinic is, is look at um, almost the perceived threat in the nervous system from old injuries and work out where there's areas which are underworking because of an old injury, which is making other areas work too much, a bit like a seesaw um, effect. Um, but yeah, congrats to you. 
props to you, Dad, doing the uh, Iron Man. Thank you. That's pretty good. Any more questions? Um, someone asked about foam rollering as well. There is actually a, re a bit of research to show that it can actually help with flexibility quite quite a bit. Um, and sometimes with that iliotibial band syndrome, patients where they've got a really tight IT band, and just when we're getting them back into running, um, getting them on the foam, foam roller before they run can actually be quite a good, good strategy because it helps to lengthen that tissue, which reduces the pressure through the bit, which is not healing, but, but trying to settle down. And that can be quite a, quite a useful tool. Um, but obviously there are that kind of, there are, there are different types of foam rollers and some which are quite savage and they're kind of a bit masochistic and, uh, um, but yeah, there is some research to show that it can help with, with flexibility um, and recovery as well. Yeah. Um, any questions spring it, spring it for you, Pete? No, I, I just want to say a thanks to Instant Physio because um, and the story you basically said about that, I know it's very similar to mine. I came in and found Instant Physio via Google um, and had a very bad knee, what I thought was a knee pain, but it was actually because I hadn't been doing strength and conditioning. Um, so my, my kind of um, calves and my glutes and everything were, hand, hamstrings were very weak. So um, obviously it was pulling um, completely. So that's kind of stopped me from being able to run long distance. But um, you guys said exactly the same thing that because I've ran so many mar marathons in the past, as long as I can just get to run an injury free, I'll be able to run the marathon. And I managed to run the marathon. I didn't get a PB, but I was only eight minutes off my PB with literally no, no training at all, except the odd long run at the weekend, just to try and get some time on my legs. So um yeah, com completely agree. And I think the whole methodology at Cooper is that less is more. So as long as you do three of your core um, sessions a week, which is your tempo, your speed and your long run, you'll be good. And then as long as you do cross training or easy running, then actually that's a lot more. And I think too many people, like you said, try and go out and train hard um, mm -hmm. and don't see the results and then get injured. Um, whereas actually, if you slow down, you will get faster because you're more recovered for your um, your speed and your tempo, and also you can run longer because, like you said earlier, you're more you're more rested come Sunday. So, um, so no, I I just want to say thanks for that, and I think everything you said is is bang on. Cool, I appreciate that, Pete. That's uh, very kind. If there's any more questions, then uh, yeah, just fire away. But one one last thing is, you know, we'll be on the. Cooper app. Um, if someone does want to ask about footwear, I'll definitely give them some tips and things like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying I hate, hate, hate running shoes, but any questions you have, then I'll be happy to help. Um, uh, again, you know, medical advice is tricky. We can't be kind of diagnosing people and things like that, but um, definitely kind of fascinated with the science of running injuries and um, happy to help people when they're uh, feeling a bit stuck. Um, so thanks for thanks for turning up, um, and um, well, I, I may well see you on one of the one of the runs as a little team um, team run soon. Yeah, definitely. And thank you very much, Ed. All and right. I've just put in a month's free into the chat. So if anyone wants to learn more about the Cooper app, click on that link, and um, you can download it and have a have your first month free to try the app out. Um, and Ed, will you send the recording of this out to those who signed up but didn't join? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're also starting this new run it like online class thing for knee pain as well, which I might send you some information about as well. It's basically like a, a daily 15 minute Zoom class for, for knee pain, um, which um, I can kind of share with some people as well, which it just means doing your rehab with supervision from a physio is just quite accessible and it's quite admin free because all you have to do is, is be on Zoom. So I'll, I'll, I'll send some information about that as well. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, Good. Ed. No worries. Have a nice uh, evening and we'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye bye. Take it easy. See you later.